I'm like, I'm just gonna stab myself in the face with this straw. It's fine. I should, like, you know, aim it. Hello, welcome to my knitting adventure. My name is Zara, and I knit things. Um, you can find me on social media as Zips Knits, Ravelry, Instagram, etc. Um, yes, to new viewers, welcome. To old viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we can get this show on the road. Um, I will start off <laughs> with what I'm wearing. Um, I, it's not a sweater. It's not a sweater today because it is unseasonably warm. Today is April 12th. It should be hovering around zero degrees Celsius, maybe up to 10 degrees maximum. And it is 25. It is 25 degrees Celsius today. Um, I am incensed. It is, it is too hot. Like, it's nice out. Yes, I, it's nice out. I will give it that. But when I flip from just below freezing to 20 degrees above freezing, it's just... I don't know. I don't know what to do. I got fan pointed at me. I'm in shorts. I got my, my, my lightweight uh, summer knits out. So yeah, this is the Scotch Broom Top by Wool and Pine. Um, it is a top-down construction, so like you, you cast on an I-cord cast on, and you knit the first lace panel, you pick up, you knit the other I-cord, you knit the second lace panel, and then you join in the round, and it's basically just a box, <laughs> but with pretty lace. Um, it is a really, really pretty lace pattern. The, the broomstick is very pretty, but it's a little bit fussy. Um, and it blocks out, like, it, it weighs itself down. So I, when I finished knitting this, it was probably like an inch higher. So I added an extra lace motif, and now it's just a little bit, a little bit too much lace for me. I have to strategically pick which bralette goes underneath <laughs> to keep everything PG. <laughs> but um, it's it's super pretty. I love I love this pattern. I love the fit of it. Um, the yarn is a merino and linen blend. It's like eighty percent, maybe ninety percent merino, ten percent linen. Like it, there's a smidge, but just a smidge of linen in it. Um, and it is the color Alchemy uh, from Fantasy Fiber Yarn Co. Um, I think I got I got this back when she was still known as Rocky Mountain Yarn Co. And it was part of her uh, wizarding Harry Potter collection, etc. Uh, I think it was a Fantastic Beasts collection in particular. Um, so yeah, it's... Is that pretty? And I wear it a lot. It's like one of those like statement like I go and I'm like I'm I'm totally dressed up for this, but also I'm wearing bike shorts. So like do with this what you will. Um I'm finding that this even though this um wool is a single ply, like it's it's holding up really well. I think it's probably because it is such a lightweight garment and I'm not like all of my pilling is usually on the insides of my arms and uh, on my sides I guess I guess I rub a lot there so this is holding up really well like I'm getting I don't think I've depilled this once uh, it's, it's lovely it's lovely yeah um see so yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm wearing um guess I will show you what I finished because I have in fact finished things. Uh, so first up, I did fi finish my Musselboro hat uh, right in time for this goddamn heat wave. <laughs> I'm sorry if people, I probably should put in like a, 
I have no control over which profanities come out of my mouth. I will try to keep it <laughs> as clean as possible, but sometimes it just comes out. Um, so this is the Muscle Row hat um, by Isolda, and it's just a giant peanut, <laughs> giant peanut. Um, this yarn is the Mantulin Sparkle from Blue Brick, held double with uh, some merino, no, not merino, mohair silk um, from Emily C. Gillies. So it's like, it's a super warm hat because it's all doubled up. It's got cashmere in it. It's got mohair in it. It's got merino in it. <laughs> it's got, like, it's, it's got some sparkles in it. So this is a really warm hat. Um, when I finished it, we actually had, like, two days of negative 10 right afterwards. So I was like, yes, I get to use it this year. And now it's 20 degrees. So like, this is probably going away for the rest of the year. But I have it for next year. So there's that. Yeah. The other thing that I finished that I'm very happy to have off the needles, but I'm a little bit disappointed with, um, is I finished my Carlisle. I don't know why I'm like, pretend, like going this way. Like you can hear me. The microphone's like right here. I'm like not covering the microphone. So this is Carlisle. I still, I like, I have a hat. I'm like, I gotta hold it up and show my face at the same time. Like that's what my brain said. So this is a Carlisle sweater. Um, it is the saddle shoulder construction. So you can see it's got like this sort of straight edge onto the shoulder and then drops immediately down afterwards. So this was originally knit with a, I wanna say two inch neckband, like the, the, it was a folded over two inch neckband. I ripped it all off and redid it with this tiny, like I just ripped down to about 10 stitches and then folded it over and sewed it in. Because I don't have enough neckline for me. So the way that this sits, it sits at about here, which is much too high and I feel like I'm choking. So with that neck, that extra neck piece, I was actually getting bubbling up at the top of my chest here. Even though like the sides fit nicely, the shoulders fit nicely, I was getting this bubbling because this front neck piece was just too high on me. So pulling out all of that neck has helped a lot. Um, so I'll throw a picture in of me wearing it or maybe some video of me wearing it. We'll see. Uh, so I ripped out the whole neckline and this tiny neck has helped the fit so much. I don't get that bubbling. It still feels very high to me. So if I'm brave enough, I might perform some sweater surgery, like give it a little bit, a little bit more of a scoop. But because this is a top down, <laughs> it's not like I can just pull it out. No, I, I fully have to cut into it and um, do a little bit of surgery. But right now, it is wearable. Um, the color is fabulous. It is BFL fingering from Brine Dye Works in the colorway Tiernanog. Um, and it's sort of like, I, I don't know if this is color accurate. It's like kind of, it's almost like pink camo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got burgundy, it's got um, almost brown, it's got purple, it's got pinkish, it's, so like it turns into like pink cambo. Anyways, purple, pink, brown situation. Um, yeah, I might, I might also <laughs> have to pull out this, I, I, I did the whole two inch folded over hem to fit with everything. And I think it's a little bit too tight on my hips. So it like sort of rides up and I get like a bubble. Anyway, there's just like, there's just enough like small fit issues that overall, although I am very pleased with how it fits my shoulders, I just have like other little, little tweaks that I'm like, mm, ah, ah. Um, yeah, so I might have to also rip out the hem 
And because it's got this specific pattern in it, I will either do the same thing that I did to the collar and just do a tiny, tiny little hem so it doesn't get pulled in, or I'll block the shit out of it and take out all of the ribbing stretch because that might also make it hang better. Or last option is I could add this, I could pull it out and turn it into a split hem uh, so that I've got that little bit of extra give in my hips. Because right now, right now, <laughs> this hem. Anyways, it's like, it's one of those things where every single piece is like nice on its own and then I put it all together and I'm like, mm, not gonna wear that. Anyways, so both very exciting and a little bit disappointing. Uh, you can see my not woven in ends for this. This is from after I did surgery on the, on the collar already and I haven't woven it in. Everything else is woven in. It's woven in, it's blocked. It's literally just, <laughs> just from messing with the collar. Um, and it's also to help me know where the back is so that I can put like a label on it or something. Okay, um, the other thing I did is I drew out a cable and I converted it into a chart and then knit it up. Uh, so this is like a, I think it's a worsted weight, Wool of the Andes Superwash uh, Knit Picks. I think I did it on like a four millimeter needle, but that means nothing to anybody because my gauge is so loose that you would not get the same thing. Uh, <laughs> could probably go down a needle size because you can see I'm very, very loose knitter. Anyway, so I've got the cable that I drew. I'm very proud of myself. I've never actually translated um, one of my my drawings on into knitting. And now I just need to decide what I'm going to use to do with this. I have I have an idea about putting this into a sweater. But we shall see. I'm going to use it at some point. But, you know. Uh, next up, what am I working on? These one. All right. What have I been working on? So, I did, in fact, work on this a little bit, and I'm very proud of myself for picking this up and working on it. So this is the wool folk jacket, winter folk, wool folk, winter folk jacket by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I started knitting on one of the sleeves. So... I thought this was fully just a drop shoulder. No, this is a whole cap. This is a whole cap sleeve on here. Um, and then into the sleeve. Um, yeah, so here's the cable. I still have like another 14 inches or something to do in the body. So I figured I would do the sleeves. Um, show the fit. So the fit is a little bit like it's all at the same time like really good and also really good. I mean this is also not blocked so I don't know how this is going to fit in general but you know. I think it's going to fit nice um, and I'm ready to have a giant. See right now I could literally stop this here and this is like just below my low hip but no I want this to go to my knees for all of my elf life vibes it's also gonna have a hood because you know reasons anyways I did pick this up and I started knitting it again I'll do the sleeves and I'll do the hood and then I will just go to town with whatever I have left on the body it is a pretty cable Um, yeah, and this is in Knit Picks Upcycle Worsted. Color is Verde. It's green, guys. Just in Spanish. Green in Spanish. 
Thank you, nitpicks. <laughs> okay, so I've been working on that a little bit. Um, I also started in on a test knit for Sarah Opie. Um, this is her resource raglan. Oh, anyway, yeah, so this is a resource raglan. Um, basically, I decided to do the cable, cable raglan auction. So basically, this test knit is for a book. Like, this isn't just, like, one pattern. This is a sweater recipe book. Okay, not a sweater. A raglan recipe book. Uh, she has four different gauges. 18 stitches per four these they're all for per four inches so it's about it's 18 stitches uh 20 stitches 22 stitches and 24 stitches so you can use any fret thing from fingering weight up to an aran if you wanted to make like a super chunky 18 stitch gauge raglan it comes with like six different raglan options this is the cable option which is a major modification it's not just like a you gotta have like a little bit of extra skills to do it um all of her classic raglans are just like a single stitch or like a double stitch anyways it's, it's she explains like four different ways to do the raglan plus includes a couple like fancy stitch options um plus includes like a wide raglan so you could put whatever you wanted inside of this wide raglan line um also there, there are three neckline options so this is the low neckline um, I haven't put a collar on it yet because I have choice paralysis and I can't decide. So this is the low neckline and I might just throw like an eye cord on here because I kind of like this wide scoopy situation. Or maybe I'll put like a little one inch neckband on it. Nobody knows. Not even me. Um, I can't decide. I might do short sleeves on this or like half sleeves. And then knit the body until I feel like being done. Um, this is knit, it's also, it's also got like 20 different sizes. I think it's up to a 70 inch bust. Uh, like a 20, might be a 24 to a 70, but it might be a 28 to a 70. I can't remember. And it's like to every two inches up to a 70 inch bust. Like this is, this pattern is enormous. It is completely ridiculous. It includes A-line drapings, it includes split hems, it includes full bust adjustment, it includes under bust darts. It like it's literally waist shaping, like literally everything. Um and I'm going pretty plain. Like I might add a little bit of uh increases for the hip line if I do decide to make this into a more of a tunic um type option. So the size I'm knitting is size seven. Uh, which is a 40 inch bust line. So I am a 36 at my upper bust and my full bust. <laughs> um, so it'll give me four inches of positive ease. Um, the raglan is also a compound raglan, so it increases fast and then slow and then fast again right under, under the arms. Um, this yarn that I'm using. Uh, okay, so the yarn, this is actually three skeins alternating right here. Um, but that's also because I did a dumb <laughs> and I cast on my neckline with the darkest skein that I had. And obviously I was alternating with the darkest and lightest and then I ripped it out and then I pulled it out and then I was just doing like the darkest and like a, the, one of the other four middle skein. I ripped out this neckline like three times, which is why I didn't put a proper neckline in and I'll go back and fix it later because I just, I can't be bothered. So this is BFL in DK or sport weight. I, I call this a sport weight. I think she actually rebranded. So here we go. This is Emily C. Gillies, BFL DK. I, she's rebranded it to sport and it is, it is definitely much closer to a true sport weight. Um, colorway is navy. So it's got, it's got purple, it's got navy, it's got sort of like a tealish color in there. Um, she does kettle dye for all of her skeins, like her, her full skeins of yarn. 
Um, it's non-super wash. Oh, this one actually does say sports slash DK on it. 115 grams, 255 yards, 233 meters. I have six gains of this, so that is more than enough. I think I usually use four and a half of sport weight when I do sleeves and like a proper length. So if I do no sleeves, I might be able to get like a pretty good tunic, maybe even, maybe even make it into a mini dress. Who knows? I'm playing with ideas. This is fully a like, I'm just, I'm just going with it. Um, and then if I finish that, I've started swatching. Cause as I said, I wanted to use fingering weight, um, Fantasy Fiber Co. Fantasy Fiber Co, Rocky Mountain, etc. Dead Man's Flats Fingering, which is the single ply merino mohair blend in fingering weight. So I am swatching. This is the tiniest little swatch. I, I'm swatching when, <laughs> when I'm not just knitting on this sweater. So I'm swatching for another one. Um, because I want a fingering weight one too, but I was just, I was fingering weighted out after that Carlisle. I couldn't do it. It just, it was too much. It was, it was too much. Um, so I've started doing the gauge swatch for this fingering weight. I'm hoping for about a 24 stitch gauge. Um, you can see the halo on that. Like it's so fluffy. It's so soft. If you do not have a mohair allergy, I definitely, definitely recommend. Um, yeah, so that's swatching for that. Um, I will probably do like, th these are the things like I, I'm either gonna do a V-neck or I'm going to pull it up into a crew neck, like the mid-rise neck with like a little collar and do long sleeves and I can wear that underneath the other one layering pieces. So that is what I'm working on. I am not going to do a pick three segment today because I have an obscene number of acquisitions. Okay, I didn't, obscene is, a, is an exaggeration, but um, when I get acquisitions, they all come in at the same time, obviously. Like there's no way to just, you know, have them come in at a steady rate. No, everything has to come in at the same time or not at all. Um, and then also I decided to go to a yarn store because treat yourself. Um, I had a, a doctor's appointment and I decided that the yarn store visit afterwards was totally warranted. All right, so I guess I'll start with the yarn store stuff because it's on top. <laughs> so... I, I only got myself sweater quantities this time. This, is, I want to say it's a, it's a worsted to a ran weight, non super wash, Highland wool. What is this? Made in Peru. What is this? Okay, we got blue sky fibers, wool stock worsted. So it says worsted, but I think you could probably use this at on a ran weight. Um. It is 100% um, fine Highland wool in the colorway Driftwood, and I have a lot of this. I got 600 grams because, you know, 450 wasn't going to be enough. These are 150 gram skeins, and I am thinking, like, just a squishy it's either it's gonna be something super textured um but I'm thinking like a squishy cardigan like a wrap yourself in a blanket like wander around cardigan or some sort of cabled cardigan but I feel like I need needs to have some good texture um, and it's gonna be like a comfort blanket cardigan So blue sky, wool, wool stock, wool stock, blue sky, wool stock. This is my first time getting blue sky, uh, but I've heard good things about it and I touched it and I needed it. 
Um, I got that at Unit, because uh, that is one of, or pretty much the only wool store that I go in person to. Um, sometimes I go to other ones. There's a lot of them in my city, but no. The other thing that I got, because apparently I was on a Highland wool adventure, is... So this is again Highland wool. It's fingering weight this time. Um, from Isager, Isager? It's either Isager or Isager. Um, yeah, 100% wool, 50 grams fingering weight, 275 meters. Um, that is the other, only thing. It's, so it's got this lovely heathered effect. I don't know if it's showing up, but it's yellow and purple and gray and blue. Uh, it's a colorway sky? Highland sky? Sky. Colorway sky. Um, and I also got enough of that for some sort of sweater or something. Um, alright. So, next up, I got... More Fantasy Fiber Co., but this time with her new labels. They're so cute. It's got little mushrooms, skull with some teeth and some yarnsies. Spellbook. All right, so this is the Colorway Enchanted Forest. This is for her um, collaboration with Alicia Plums. Um, they're doing another bibliophile knit-along. I don't think I will be using this for a bibliophile. <laughs> um, this is, the yarn is uh, Mine Decay. It is a single ply and it is alpaca, merino, and silk. So this is basically, um, this was the alternative that she found to the merino and mohair single ply yarn because she had a bunch of people asking her for an alpaca blend or something equivalent that's got like fluff um but this one is dk and this one's fingering but for people who had the mohair allergy they needed something something else so this is again it is very soft it's going to bloom a lot it is dk weight you could probably knit it at a worsted weight um i'm very excited for this i don't know what it's going to be probably a sweater um but I worry because I'm so hard wearing on my sweaters on the arms that it's going to pill so much. So maybe, maybe it might have to be a shawl or a blanket or something. I don't know. I got a sweaters quantity, obviously, because I just buy sweater quantities and then decide what I'm going to do afterwards. Um, I also, oh, I got a dog. Fly by. I also, this is part of her Coven Club, so her monthly colorway. Um, it is purple, black, navy blue, moody, moody situation. So this is the colorway Clairvoyance. I think it is the February or the March color. What's today? Today is April. Um, so it might be be February because I was a little bit late in getting this might be March it's February March I can't remember um, this is on her DK yak uh, base so it's called Mor morally gray DK it is um, merino silk and yak 60 20 20 oh that's that's a lot of yak and silk um, I plan on making a shawl with this um, but it could also be like a t-shirt type situation with the silk in there. That would, that would be lovely. Um, yeah. And I got more because all my things came at the same day. It was one of those yarn days where I had three separate orders from three separate air, like locations all coming in at the same time. Um, I also got the monthly colors for Emily C. Gillies. Um, what is this? It is the March colors. 
Um, so it's just the Merino sock mini sets. I've got 20 grams of each five of the five colors. It's very pretty. And while I was ordering from her, I also got some more mohair. <laughs> so this is the mohair silk lace in the colorway Nimbus. Everything's very smushed because it came vacuum packed. And it's sort of this blue gray silver color. Yep. That's what I got from Emily Seal Gillies. And then I got a lot of fiber. All right, so, cause you know, I decided. Um, so this is all oatmeal BFL. So the BFL is in sort of like an oatmeal-y color to begin with. Got this one, I think I've got, got two of that one. Um, this one is Prairie Skies. So this is all from Firewood Fabrico. She's in Manitoba. So yeah, it's all BFL. This one, Prairie Skies. This one is Lilac Lane. Got two of this one. This one is Plum Believable. And then this one is Johnny Jump Up. And I think that is everything. <laughs> that is that is everything, I swear. Um, I haven't been doing much spinning this last week because, as you could see, I was knitting things. Um, I still have my Islandic sheep wool on my wheel. That's what I'm working on when I'm spinning. Other than that, I'm like, I'm just gonna stab myself in the face with this straw. It's fine. I should make, you know, aim it. So yeah, um, I think I'm gonna start, I need to start thinking about summer, summer knits because obviously I'm not gonna be able to wear any of these heavy wool items um, soon because it's it's dang hot. I think it's gonna go back down soon, but obviously not today and not tomorrow. So I'm stuck with my summer knits for a little bit. Um, if you have any suggestions for uh, summer t-shirts, leave it in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Um, yeah. Until then, I will see you on the next time. Bye.